Hey guys, how are you? Today is July 11th, 2008, also known as the official release date of the iPhone 3G. However, this is not an iPhone 3G, so don't get too excited. But, today was also the official release date of the iPhone 2.0 firmware update, as well as the iPod Touch 2.0 firmware update. So, this video is kind of a quick rundown of what to expect um, in terms of new features and modifications. So, um, excuse me if I miss anything small, because I've only had this for only a few hours, literally, so I'm still learning as I go. But I figured it would be cool to show you guys. So here we go. Um, the home screen hasn't changed, you know, the year unlock screen. That's our dog, Ashley. Um, so yes, as, as you can see, the home screen doesn't really change. It's 9 o'clock. Thank you, thank you, Mr. McIntosh. 9 o'clock, 9 o'clock. Double 9 o'clock. Um, yes, the home screen is more filled up, but that's because I have more applications installed via the App Store. Very cool. But first off, let me just say, um, new here is the Contacts application, which I think was part of the iPod Touch, but for some reason, Apple felt like iPhone users need, need it as well, even though technically, technically we already have it because it takes you to your Contacts page. I don't want to show anybody's names. And besides that, um, the App Store is new, but I will go through that in a second. But first of all, let me take you through settings. If I can touch it right, sorry. I'm like also looking at the screen at the same time as doing this, so it's going to be kind of tough. Alright, so first off, you will notice as soon as you get into the menu, you can see a new option called Fetch New Data. This, this goes for push email, push calendars, and all that stuff. You can change how, how often it's um, updated, and you can change for which um, contacts you choose. Basically, this, this always keeps you up to date with Microsoft Exchange and your email, your calendars, and stuff. I don't, I don't really use this right now, but maybe one day I will. Uh, besides that, we have restrictions, which I actually just found before this video. I even forget where it is. I think it's in general. Um, yes, there it is. Restrictions. Restrictions, restriction, excuse me, are basically, well, it's pretty self-explanatory. Let me just turn it off first of all. Let me just put in a random password. One, two, three, four. Confirm the password. This just lets maybe, like, say I had a son and I gave him an iPhone and I don't want him using... Safari, sucks for him, YouTube, iTunes, you know what, let's just turn everything off for him. But let's turn it back on, because this is a demo, so that's basically what that is. To disable it, you put your password in, and then you go back. Simple as that. International keyboard support is actually very important, because the iPhone was released in, I believe, more than 20 countries today. So it's obviously important to include support for all these languages. Look at this. This is great of Apple. They have French, Dutch, I guess, Spanish, Portuguese, all that, Chinese, Japanese, and obviously English, because I'm American, obviously. And, yeah, nothing really new there, just that. And miscellaneous app settings, which is way down here, um, this basically goes for applications you have installed. It's just kind of settings on the side. And, for instance, I have the PayPal app installed via the App Store, and I can turn on or off shipping address or quick pay and that changes for each application you use. So next up is a very simple one, but this is very important to a lot of people, um, and that is the calculator application. First of all, you will notice, hopefully, that the icon is different. It's more of a modern kind of thing, and the keys are more squared. But there you go. Brand new interface, brand new colors. Um, it does look better in my opinion, however the only thing I do not like is the clear key is up there because I find myself doing this and going down here with the clear key but now it's a period. But it's just one of those changes that I will have to get used to. But the coolest feature of all, you turn a horizontal and it automatically changes to a, hor to a horizontal calculator, excuse me, to a scientific calculator um, as well as a horizontal calculator, makes sense. And you can do all kind of um, cool stuff like, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to go into it. Um, the, the only downside is the keys are smaller, but that's an obviously no expect, and there's the clear key again up there. And then you turn it back, and there you go. And that is great for school, because I actually use this calculator in, in my math class all the time. Well, not now, because I'm on summer break. But I uh, did find myself needing these features, but it weren't they uh, weren't there at the time, but now they are. So very cool. Um, so if I do take another math math app math application math class this upcoming semester, then I guess I can use them now. 
And that is the modified calculator application. So next up is kind of a big one. And when I say kind of, I mean, it's 100% the greatest feature that Apple has ever put on the iPhone. And that is the App Store. The big thing with 2.0 is official support for third-party applications. People, listen to me when I say this. This feature alone will sell many, many, many more iPhones, as well as make developers tons of money and stuff like that. It's just a brand new platform, and it's so cool. So when you first launch the App Store, you um, are automatically presented with the featured page, which is just like iTunes, it just shows you featured applications. And as you can see at the very top is AIM. Now, I don't have AIM installed at this time, but if you go to an applications page, you can see a basic explanation. Um, it's usually a screenshot, which is also very good, because sometimes you buy an application and, and you get in there, and the interface just plain sucks. And then you can click on reviews, which is very cool. You can um, read people's thoughts on the go, which is awesome. It's usually loading faster than this. I don't know why. It's, there it goes. That's the first time that actually happened. And yes. There you go, you can actually read people's thoughts, and this makes it much easier to read. And you click on more reviews, get more and more and more. There's tons of, tons of, uh, ton, blah, 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 excuse me, tons of user thoughts for that. So very cool. And if you wanted to buy it, you click free, then install. It'll automatically go back to your home screen. Oh, and it's for your password. Let me take off the screen for a second. This is your iTunes password, by the way. This is just to verify it's you and just, and you know, just to sync it up with your account. Then as you can see, you've already purchased, let's, now see, I actually purchased this item already, and it technically is free, so disregard that. Click OK. Now, as you can see, it installs it, I mean, it downloads and installs in real time, which I think is awesome. And this is not through a Mac or PC, this is through the iPhone only, no wires, magic. Not really magic, just very, very convenient. It takes a second to install. Bow, check up, bow, check up, wow, bow, wow. This is actually taking longer than I anticipated. The average application definitely does not take this long. Maybe aim is just more complicated? I don't know. Oh, there it goes. It was just doing its final thing. And you launch AIM and you're presented with the AIM interface. You can log in with your AIM account, MobileMe or .Mac. And believe me, ins installing apps is much quicker. It's just that one hung up for some reason. Maybe it's being downloaded a lot or I don't know. So yes, that is how you install an um, application. Now if you go back to the App Store, on the home page or the featured page, uh, oh, okay, also, real quick, sorry, I'm talking too fast there. If you click tell a friend, it automatically creates a new email for you, and I can add an email. For instance, if I want to add it to myself, start typing my name, David, and there I am, daviddefranco.gmail.com, and I could send away. And what do you know, I'll just send it just for demo purposes. And you should hear a sound very soon. Yep, there it goes. Now, at the top, you can click what's hot. Like I said, this is just like iTunes, but for applications, you can kind of just see what applications are popular and stuff like that. So down here, if you click Categories, or Touch rather, you can browse by categories. Um, I will obviously not go through every application, I mean every category, excuse me, but I'll go through games because that's probably the most popular right now. And as you can see, they have tons and tons and tons and tons and tons, tons, tons and tons and tons of games. And I'm not joking, guys, tons of games. Keep in mind, not every application is free, obviously, because this stuff does take time and money to create. For instance, here is South Park Imagination Land. It says $10. Um, and it actually has three and a half out of five stars, which is not bad for a South Park game, I guess. And it kind of gives you a screenshot of what to expect. Now, let's, let me find a free one. Here we go. Um... Morocco? I don't even know what that is. But I will install that for you guys for a demo for demo purposes. Again, it automatically takes you to home screen. Maybe this one will be quicker. It's just my email in the background. 
Takes a second to install. This video is going to be a little long, but that's okay, it's iPhone goodness. Now, this shouldn't take as long as the aim on, hopefully. Because it usually is quicker than the aim. And don't worry, I will have a video series explaining all these um, applications that I have on here. For instance, I weather bug and all these. Okay, so it does take a little while. But hey, this is going over over the airwaves. This is pretty cool. Again, there are no wires attached. This is hands-free. And yes, it is it is faster to install these applications via iTunes itself, but it is just really cool to do it from the iPhone or or iPod Touch for Wi-Fi. Now let's launch let's launch excuse me this application. Now I have no idea what this is. Um, I don't even know. Maybe somebody can post a comment what the hell this is, but <laughs> I guess you can go to your settings and stuff like that. But yeah, that's Morocco or Morocco. I don't know how to say it. But yeah, so let's go back into the App Store. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm trying to hold the phone as, um, yeah, the phone as still as possible. Go back home. Let me show you one more category, just for presentation purposes. Um, I can click on utilities. That's a good one. These are always random stuff. As you can see, Amy's at the top. Um, I'm trying to find a good one that'll interest you guys. Google Mobile App's actually pretty cool, although I did uninstall it. Um, IGN Game Reviews is a good one. Light, it just makes your screen white. Movies on App actually seems pretty cool. This, this actually allows you to search movie times locally and um, actually buy movie tickets and watch trailers, which I think is pretty sweet. And as I said before, I will have a series showing off these um, applications one by one, or maybe three for each video. I mean, not not all these apps, just just the ones that I have. And yeah, I don't I don't know why I exited the app store just now. But yes, that is your categories. Top twenty five, self explanatory again. Just like iTunes, it lists it lists the applications top twenty five downloaded. Number one is Super Monkey Ball, which I do have, which I will go over in a future video of mine. There's a screenshot of it. It's very cool. And then you can also search down here. Let me search. Um, I'm missing. There we go. What should I search here? Um, I'll just search Apple to see what comes up. Apple Incorporated. It finds applications by Apple, I guess, in relation to Apple. And for some reason, eBay Mobile came up. I don't know how that relates to Apple, but ah, uh, there you go. It says Apple in the description, which is why I picked it up. And there's an eBay application. And as you can see, four out of five stars, which is very good for its first day. So kudos to eBay. And then updates. Uh, this is actually very convenient. Your updates for each each application are put in here automatically as as they are pushed out by the developers. So I thought that was really cool. And now, real quick, as a preview of my future video series, I will like to name each application I've downloaded so far. I have Weatherbug. Tap Tap Revenge, which is just like DDR. AOL Radio, very cool. Very, very cool, actually. It's much, much better than I ever expected. eBay, Super Monkey Ball, awesome. Pandora, which is online radio. PayPal, which is very convenient. Remote, which allows you to control iTunes from your phone. Twitterific, uh, your Twitter application. Um, basically, it's a mobile version of the desktop client. Whirl, which I actually just downloaded, but I know they um, demoed it at the keynote. And it's like a geotagging kind of friend social networking thing, so I had to play with it. So, AIM, which is pretty cool, and that game or guide is downloaded. And that's basically it, guys. Um, as I mentioned before, all of this is is available to iPod Touch users as well, so this is not only an iPhone thing. And this is a question I've actually received before. Um, do you need the, I, the, excuse me, do you need the iPhone 3G to use these applications? And the answer is no. As I showed before, this is the original iPhone. This is the iPhone 2G, as you would call it. Hey okay, guys, that's basically it. Um, I hope you enjoyed it, and I apologize if this video is a little too long, but it's iPhone goodness, and that's always a good thing. Thanks for watching.